clear the dead? No. Oh, dead well, comrade. There you go. Mm. Yeah, that works. Well, well, that is it. I spaced out while I was reading something. You see things that aren't there. Um, dead comrade, the character hears the voice of an old friend, now long dead. At severe level, you may even have visions, but this isn't severe. It's only at minor. So now and again, under stress, you might see people that died. Yeah, that would, that would work, table? honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Is there a table for this, or did you just make that up? No, it's uh, page 237. It's under the visions and voices um, set. Core book <laughs> or ascension? Um, core book. 247. Uh... The only other thing I think might fit would be horrific nightmares. Mm. Or maybe righteousness, depending on what, how she feels about it. If she feels like she was totally justified. Mm. That could work too. That or that, it's really up to Moriana and John what he wants to take. But I really like the idea of dead comrades. I mean, the other one is fine too. Whatever. I'm, I'm fine with both. Uh, I mean, she didn't really see them. Probably righteousness would make the most sense to me, because I don't think that it would be their faces that she sees. Um, maybe tra flashbacks, considering the um, the Mora massacre. That's true. Oh yeah, that that could work. Starts seeing that Mara massacre again. She starts thinking she's there. Yeah, um, that's that's fine. So, is it? This session, then? Uh, not really. I mean, it won't be long. Or do you? I'm... Or do you? Okay. Yeah, because there's a, still the entire like thing. Oh, to that's go. right. Yeah, there's the fallout. Okay. Rush back. <laughs> totally. This has been. <laughs> I totally forgot about everything else. Not only the fallout, like but the... meeting and actually one of the things that Farseer Farisha does is that probably the alive people can hear it. Uh, something along the lines that you know how to... <laughs> Jesus. Oh yeah, now that the combat is gone... Uh, <laughs> the Farseer and Exarch, they both take their helmets off. And... Uh, for Moriana, for John and his Xenophilia... Farseer <laughs> is like... Straight milf. Like not not like oh, young, yeah. but like, but like really. I mean, elder are usually space so they're usually beautiful. But this one is like slightly older, but still uh, nice. And, you leave that milf alone. <laughs> and yeah, and the fun bus exarch is well usual, although he has that. Uh, not really Rack Hampson is, but he has the eyes and face of a warrior. But he offers you a, a small smile. Even in the proceedings of a fallout, he like quietly will ask you uh, both that if you are fine, that was a... And of course, they will give like a small praises like that was an excellent fight and... You didn't exactly have to do this, yada yada yada. Uh, of course, in the different area, the agent is talking with Caden, but they are making sure that they are not eavesdropped. Uh... Oh, he's probably fucked plenty of Eldar in his time. It's okay. <laughs> Please remember that the Eldar themselves are also Teldans, especially if Francies. Yeah, well, she can start blushing then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's not. She's not. She. She doesn't really blush. She looks like more flattered, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Would she? The monk She seems to be dealing with them a lot, or at least Caden. So this one, she doesn't really care. Variety is nice. Anyways, uh, let's not turn her. Variety is nice. Abridged version. Spice of, of life. Abridged version of 
whatever, I don't know, Fortran. Uh, anyways, so maybe to make not this too long, because I don't want uh, both players to just sit idly and waste too much time. Uh, yeah, basically they make sure Agent and Kaden are talking about their stuff. Agent seems pretty upset, but uh, Kaden like placates him and explains some stuff, and then Agent stays. And basically, then it turns out was was the main reason of meeting. And uh, basically, it turns out as of course Farseer is, they have their insufferable smugness. <laughs> so, especially Xant is if at a certain moment he got the feeling that uh, Kaden was thinking must not resist urge to hit, resist urge to hit. <laughs> uh, because for the most time, Farseer was like you know, not not going to the matter directly, but trying to sound mysterious and going in riddles. And then basically it comes down to this that uh, Kaden just like says, obviously there was a reason you wanted us to meet us. So what did you see, Farseer? And then. You see something that you do not see often, and you are reminded of a certain saying that goes among in Inquisition, uh, that perhaps you heard in the past, that when Farseer is smug, you have lost. If Farseer is resigned, uh, if Farseer is resigned, what? In, if first, yeah, sorry, I got distracted by a whisper. I will get to that oh. in a moment. Um, if our series is designed, that means they've lost. And if our seer is scared, that means everybody lost. And just for a split second, she's as, scared, isn't as, she? As her eyes like go slightly misty as she like reminisces what she saw, there is actually a motion of fear on her face. Oh shit, the bad. And then, just to, like she says, then she starts explaining that I saw Empa Imperium not destroyed, but subdued, changed into something works. A perfect clockwork, just existing, working for the sake of work, without no real purpose or intention. I saw Starfather rising, I saw Oblivion also rising from its slumber only to be struck down by men in white. I saw shadow and green skin menace combining and devouring half of galaxy. I saw many things, all of them one worse after another. There are dark times coming, Lord Inquisitor. And something something along the lines. Basically I just wanted to go along the idea that if something doesn't change then uh, yeah, Shape of Nightmares to come is a canon future, potential canon future. That would be bad. Which means, yeah, uh, Emperor dying, being reborn as a Starfather, Chaos God of Order, uh, and Orcs and Tyrannids combining into Devourer. Uh, and yeah, all of that fun stuff. And ba then basically through discussion, uh, they basically said that obviously Caden is not that all go happy to form an alliance, uh, and the war doesn't even come to pass. But uh, fuck, what I'm looking for here. Basically through some jobs, explanation like how elder thing, like what's the uh, what's the uh, doctrine of Imperium? So they say something like this, that, yeah, we have conflicts, but the responsible Eldar do not want to see Imperium go, because if Imperium falls, then those who will come over the course oh. of Imperium will fuck them over. Exactly, they're next, basically. <laughs> Nah, although they try to say, you know, in more respectful <laughs> words, <laughs> at least like first you tries, but the uh, feeling is well known. 
and then at some point it also comes that uh, uh, basically Caden gets a little more that he's surprised because then Farseer looks at Xanthis and asks him politely, surprisingly, to explain his dream. Or, uh, yeah, the dream about those two maidens. One in the hands of uh, Slick Animus and the other probably somewhere in Webway. Do you respond to that or do you try mm. to play that you know shit? Oh, uh, no, Xanthus will sheathe his sword, remove his helmet, put it to the side, or rather hold it in one arm, and uh, he'll begin to talk about his dream, though, in all honesty, I don't remember all the details myself. I should have written them down. <laughs> uh, I, it wasn't that much. So, one was that. You saw, uh, yeah, like beautiful maiden, that her like aura of power around her, light that reminded you of light of emperor himself, that was uh, imprisoned in like a glass cell, and she was like meditating inside of it. And on the outside, you saw a mechanical robot, and that spoke in synthesized voice, and the logical. You did a, like a logic check and you figured out that it might as well be Slicka Animus, which is bad. Um, and the other one was that you saw, uh, not webway exactly, but like a spider web, and you made the connection and some silhouettes in the dark. Was so there a woman in this one too? Uh, yeah. That was like a woman? in the spider web, closed, and she had the same light. Although I'm gonna okay, add this now that you, because you saw it from a like slight distance, or maybe the dream was not that clear. So you, f you think they are human? At least they have humanoid shape. Mm. They but they, uh, they, are they saints then? Was it the no. same woman in the spider web as in the glass cell? No. Or was it a different woman? Oh. Two different ones. Yeah. So that's the simple question was. Just if you say everything, then we go. We go with this. Everything that you can remember as a character. Yes. And then the talk like mm -hmm. continues. Basically, she reveals that those two are key to uh, revive Emperor himself. But also like through some discussion that gets a little heated, but Caden keeps uh, his cool. Basically, the pitch that they are giving is that resurrecting an emperor is not going to solve all of your problems. It's a piece of a puzzle. That and the first step to avoid the future that I saw. And... Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, Mariana asks Caden. She still hasn't removed the mask. She still got the swords up, but they're hanging by her side with the power field off, still dripping and oozing blood. Um, are they aware of who is pulling the strings behind this entire? She wouldn't say operation, but this entire ordeal. Uh, Fanbus looks between Farseer and yourself. Uh, he's talking. Uh, she's talking to Caden. Oh, looking over her shoulder. Whatever. Uh, okay, so he like slightly turns around and like out of character as a DM. I don't exactly understand what. Uh, you're the Zinchian. Oh, what's his name? Marabas. Marabas, yes. Yep. Yeah. That's who she is referring to. Are they aware who is pulling the strings behind this whole ordeal? Uh, and he like answers yes. Okay. I mean, I mean, they say. I mean, they are now because like Marabas, they they knew the name, but perhaps they didn't knew that. He was involved. He's involved right now with the affairs. Oh, Mariana would just acknowledge his involvement so that the Elder are made aware. 
<sighs> and like uh, Farisia gives a brilliant smile. Oh, we are used to dealing with schemers. Long years of practice, I must say. Or rather, many years of practice, not long years of practice. Blech, fucking hell. Uh, but yeah, oh, they also mentioned that uh, now that primaries is gone, uh, basically, long story short, they said that it's kind of bad that primaries is gone uh, because they think, like, actually, primaries is able to uh, use that uh, weapon. And if anybody looks alarmed, then Kaden just like. Just package. They know they are on this. Let's just uh, deal with this. He was a xenophobe. He would not have backed down even if we are required. Even if we pleaded with him. Uh, yep. Uh, and basically, uh, yeah. So like, I may as well. Maybe there's a possibility. But on the good news, perhaps it's good that um, assassin is obviously she could have been used to. Imperium, and maybe she still will be, but she like looks at the body, eh, maybe. I don't know much about your ever source. Uh, but yeah, her dedication, if basically she explained that she saw that if you were given her a chance, then if Officer Assassin Lorum or Death could send anybody after uh, Severan. Then he would get just enough time. Then the, basically the vision is like pure red. Basically he gets a chance to summon a greater demon of corn. And basically fuck everything up. And turn Kulf into demon world. No thanks. And I basically, <laughs> and I've basically figured out when you start talking like, if you're gonna deal with seven dominate problem. And I'm like, okay. He he is ruining a long time, he has body doubles. And if somebody comes after him, then yeah, I'm summoning Bloodletter or Bloodfierce or however he's called. That would have happened. Uh, and then for one use or another... Uh, no, wait, and speaking about that weapon, the, but she also restates and reaffirms that <laughs> find a way, but that you will need to get there get that weapon and activate it. That Will you be creeping shallow? Those tyrannids that come. This fleet is bigger than all of the previous incursions combined. Imperium is big, yes, but standard forces will not be able to survive. And Morgan I wanted to say something. On. Yeah, I'm just trying to think how she's going to word it. Uh, and are we to count on you as our allies? And then she gives uh, not. Uh, fun bus does the same. He gives even like a respectful bow. Uh, both acknowledging your alliance and acknowledging your prowess as a warrior. Uh, indeed. From afar or aboard our own vessel. And then she like gives not clear answer that someone has the faith will help and or whatever, however will be, be uh, necessary. But not to bring too much trouble. We need to contact you. Um, That's what I'm for, remember? Yeah, and then, like, uh, Funbus, like, gives a small smile. I believe uh, Zant is here. Has that covered? Alas, yes, even, the even, we, even, the even, if, even if he will be not available, we have our ways. Yes, but the reason we were having to be so secretive, she looks over her shoulder at the two bodies being dealt with, or have been dealt with. 
she looks towards Van Bus, uh, removes her helmet, and she's one of the sword, offering him a hand. Yep, she gladly. Uh, oh, no, uh, the the axe arch, the one that uh, they saved on the ship. Yeah, yeah. He like um, steps up and yeah, hands offers a handshake. Oh uh, God. Uh, is she going to boast? Maybe a bit. No. Hmm. We only met briefly aboard the base hulk, but it was our combined efforts that we managed to bring you back. If put through the same scenario again, I would have history repeat itself. She gives a firm handshake and then let's go. And uh, uh, regarding that last last whisper, considering how much damage it went, the entire equipment went off. Okay. I don't think it will be able to survive. Although the official will take remains of Kate's body, they probably will not be able to use anything from it, but they at least might try to make a, an an. Episode. I would ask. I would ask about his names, but it it doesn't matter. But, oh, yeah. Mariana is probably gonna take your plasma gun, by the way. I don't care. Yeah, what? What he wanted to say, and then I saw you whisper. Um... He got power armor as well. God damn it! <laughs> Screwed up power armor. That, that would broke my train of thought. Yeah. Just the helmet. Right. Uh, eh, no problem. Just kidding. Um. Yeah, he says I'm gonna. That I'm eternally grateful for that. I hope we can, like, you know, cooperate in the future, and that the life debt is <laughs> still on, and he's grateful that he didn't need to call it in now, that you managed to win under your own power. He respects that. Uh. And then... <laughs> and then <laughs> Harlequin, not typically for himself, there's like a silent, not silent, quiet snark, not really directed at anybody, but maybe you're close enough that you hear it. <laughs> Love words. And, but he doesn't say anything else. And then, um... Yeah, um... On one hand, she says... Uh, wait. Okay, so on one hand, 